Good evening, Papua New Guinea, and welcome to a brand new episode of Business PNG. Tonight on the show, we're here at the Daytech Technology Forum, where we speak to representatives from Fortune 500 company Oracle, as they discuss with us what cloud computing is, the benefits of cloud computing, as well as safety against threats. In the era of Google Drive and Dropbox, Gone are the days when companies would use hard drives religiously for storage purposes. Cloud computing has replaced the archaic storage tools of yesteryears with the easy to use and accessible anywhere cloud. In the simplest term, cloud computing means storing and accessing data and programs over the internet. Cloud computing enables companies to consume a compute resource such as virtual machine, storage, or an application as a utility, just like electricity, rather than having to build and maintain computing infrastructures in-house. The global cloud computing market is now worth 180 billion US dollars in vendor revenues, with the market still growing by 24% annually, according to Synergy Research. When businesses refer to cloud procurement, there are usually three models of cloud service under construction, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service is when a third party hosts elements of infrastructure such as hardware, software, servers and storage as well as providing backup, security and maintenance. Software as a service is when using the cloud software such as an internet browser or application is able to become a usable tool while Platform as a Service is a branch of cloud computing that allows users to develop, run, and manage applications without having to get caught up in code, storage, infrastructure, and so on. Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform are the world's three leading cloud computing service providers. Cloud computing allows companies to eliminate the headaches of storing their data because the companies are not managing hardware and software. That becomes the responsibility of an experienced vendor like Google Cloud Platform. The shared infrastructure means it works like a utility, where companies only pay for what they need, upgrades are automatic, and scaling up or down is easy. As cloud computing grows in popularity, thousands of companies are running all kinds of apps in the cloud, like customer relationship management, HR, accounting, and much more. After the break, we take a look at threats or security issues that cloud computing may pose. I'm Ian Girari in Manila, and you're watching Business PND. Cloud computing is looking like the future of business and offers many benefits like lower fixed costs, higher flexibility, automatic software updates, and the freedom to work anywhere. However, the cloud has its share of security issues. These include data breaches, hijacking of accounts, insider threat, malware injection, abuse of cloud services, data loss, and so forth. In Papua New Guinea, businesses are already plagued with risks such as unreliability of electricity and high internet costs. Topped with these cloud-specific security risks, it is only natural to thread lightly. This is what we can help you to grow your business. At a recent technology forum hosted by Daytech, tech experts from one of the world's leading cloud computing service providers, Oracle, address Papua New Guinean businesses about their cloud services and also answered questions about security issues. So we are here to bring in Oracle technology and the cloud, Oracle cloud technology to the PNG market. We're here to really introduce the latest and the greatest solution and what cloud can do for business and very importantly for our customers. We are pretty excited here to talk about how customers can actually uh, simplify their uh, IT environment and, and uh, going towards the cloud is a great way for them to do so. 
because when we talk about uh, managing an IT environment, we are talking about managing your uh, hardware and servers, we're talking about managing operating systems, databases and applications, right? So now we are uh, in a position where um, customers can focus more on their core business and uh, allow Oracle to run their IT for the customer through Oracle Cloud. And this means the customers can uh, now spend their time and effort on the core business. And of course, and they can also reap the benefits of uh, using someone like Oracle, who is an expert in uh, running um, large IT across the globe. So one thing that stands out for Oracle compared to other vendors is we have a complete solution. And there's not many vendors in the market who offer that. We have uh, services across all layers of clouds. And we have a reputation in the market. We have been you know, helping customers to do their business very successfully. And the same solution is now right now available in cloud. Oracle has partnered with Daysat PNG to provide cloud computing services. We normally, we do uh, customized software development for our customers. Most of them based upon Oracle database. Oracle database is the, well, technical number one in the, in the world. Uh, it's robust, it's strong, and uh, it's very reliable. Um, and it has been used in PNG for almost over 20, 25, 30 years. So it's not something new for, for the country. Uh, today we had uh, a, pres uh, a forum where we introduced, uh, we are trying to introduce the uh, cloud computing, which is not a new thing in the world, which is a very in thing at, at the moment. It's very famous, uh, it's very, very convenient. Um, in PNG we are trying to introduce that one. We do have the infrastructure ready to go on about it. Now, for the <coughs> customer, uh, now we are ready to um, uh, present it to the customer to make it happen. And we do customized development, and we can actually put it onto the cloud, and that can be deployed as well. Uh, Oracle, as, a, as our partner for the last 20 years, they are on a very good support for us, and they support us for any technical requirements. Now, we do have technical resources on, on ground. Um, we do have um, um, other resources, whatever required, but not probably it's not possible nowadays to have all the resources available. But what, wherever there is a deficiency, we go back to Oracle, and they actually support us on, on, on the um, uh, required technology. So basically, we are ready for a cloud competing in Papua New Guinea. So Oracle, from a software solution point of view, is one of the key things that we try to uh, engage with partners and uh, with Oracle and we have had a long association of dealing with Oracle and which gives us the bandwidth in terms of the products, the solutions and also Oracle being one of the top Fortune 100 companies, we try to bring the best of business practices to Papua New Guinea and uh, it is at a very affordable cost because this is a right size solution that we try to provide and we are an organization which have resources on ground in Papua New Guinea to deliver and support the installations and that Daytech has been engaging with different customers in the banking, retail and um, government clients to provide various services for ICT and uh, Oracle plays a very vital role in uh, making, providing the security, the stability, the database and uh, all those things and the partnership has been growing from strong to, uh, strength to strength over the years. Data has been an Oracle Go partner for over 20 years. We have a long-standing successful relationship. We understand that Data has been in the market and very influential and connecting a lot of our customers. So we have this idea to have a joint event six months ago and finally we are able to put it together and put it into reality. I'm Leanne Girari in Kokopo and you're watching Business PNG. And now on to business news stories making headlines across Papua New Guinea and the Pacific this week. The non-government organization will be showcasing the history of Kina during the APEC meetings in November. Chairman Wakepua says for too long the history of Kina has been neglected. He says PNG must embrace the Kina culture. Nah, Kina culture and me one plus story too and me like only Masawe. Time world he come now long, he like Sabe long. This la country only my Sabe long. Kina na history belong in na Kina na how I operate inside all system na uh, all this is something. Only like Sabe long uh, passing to Buna. 
how all Tumbuna Blomi play operate now, stop. Pua and other members of the Kina culture group have worked for nearly 16 years in collecting artifacts and the rich history of how Kina began its trade among coastal and highlands communities. He says the story of how PNG got the name of its currency must be kept because of its significance. Kina is stop before now. Uh, all this are working trade before, before yet. Now all this little road go yeah, and behind him all trade routes now. This little road only working and behind him all trade, uh, trade routes. Kina have something belong all numbers. Uh, that's all. Let me come up with highlands. Let me come up one blah treasure blah me blah. Let me come. Let me come. Let me come. Now line law highlands to line blah me blah only value in Kina not blah way through. The group has not received proper support or recognition since its inception. But not all hope is gone, Chairman Pua says if government agencies or stakeholders provide the kind of support it needs, the history of Kina culture will be of great importance. I mean like appeal on government. All you must now recognize him, Kina culture. Kina culture here, I mean, it's just long. It is not just all about making money. We are talking about something. Kina culture does not make money. Kina, we are not working for pay. If we work for pay, we wouldn't work enough these 16 years. Kina culture um, sacrificed him only yet now, only work come, coming up now 16 years because um, we know how Kina operates in our society. How Kina operates in our system, so you must appall him this life. A police officer and community leaders carried out the operation and found these cartons buried in various locations along the Bumba River settlements. More than 20 cartons of these cigarettes were dug up, brought to the Omili police station and locked in this holding cell. We've been, we've been trying to track this down for a while. Uh, we know that there have been counterfeit cigarettes out in the streets and now with this big hole coming in, it, 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 uh, it now confirms that our suspicions. This is not the first time illegal cigarettes have been confiscated in Leh. Late last year, 2,040 cartons of cigarettes were confiscated after the importer falsely declared the items as kitchenware in order to avoid paying higher duty-free taxes. These cigarettes that were found this morning are sold widely on the roadside markets. Mr. Wagambi says police will be investigating to find where the sellers are sourcing the cigarettes from. Oh, our investigators will be following up on that, working with the people from customs, and we will try to uh, find out how this thing got in and who brought it in. The 39 participants of Network Kokoda successfully completed two weeks of financial literacy training at the Community Resource Center at Sogeri yesterday. This training was facilitated by Guinea Goada Foundation. Number of representat representatives here representing a thousand of a women, children, husbands and uncles back at their various homes. So they will be a living testimony when they go back. Guinea Goada Foundation training manager Rodney Graham challenged the graduates to believe in themselves that they can do anything. Papua New Guinea, stop long, hand blow, legally picking any. I know, say, man, I'm straight, huh? But they are future, yes, they are right, partially. But in Guinea Guada, CPL, we don't believe this. We believe that everybody that can breathe and that can live a life is part of the future. Whatever training you get now will help you with your future five or ten years down the line. Betty Tavulu said the course helped her understand how to make money grow. So, I'm the deeply impact of my own mamas, my own one-man leaders, my own one-man group. Now that my own people go back, my own people can work in, my team is going to go and my own people. CPL representative Quentin Chakumai applauded the graduates and encouraged them to keep learning. About is, even though you've already left school or you're, you uh, consider dropout, you're dropping in, and you're learning a new skill that some of your friends that have continued do not have. In urban settings like Lay City, the areas are subdivided into zones that serve different purposes. 
These zones are identified as commercial, residential and industrial zones. According to the Physical Planning Act 1989, under Section 72, the purposes for which a building may be used in a zone are the purpose specified in respect of that zone. Over the past months, our investigation showed the apparent breach of regulations by businesses operating in residential areas and the lack of enforcement by authorities. This has become an issue of public concern in lay. On innocent land can see my visa. Because I'm a swab loss, a swab loss, national government, the provincial government, all no behind him good play road. Last week, the lay city council's health division closed a sausage factory in a compound that houses clothing shops. The factory is also located near a residential area at Two Mile. Our family reported the water pollution to lay city council in 2014, but nothing was done. After raising the same concern on media two weeks ago, waste management team from the division closed the factory. This has triggered the public in Lay, who are questioning the processes used in approving investors to operate businesses in the city. One, one area. The member for Lay, John Russell, said he previously wrote to the Physical Planning Board regarding issues of concerns, which includes illegal operation of businesses in residential areas and the mishandling of zoning use. Morbeck currently doesn't have an official Physical Planning Board. The Provincial Executive Council will soon appoint a new board who will rectify these problems. And that's all we have for this episode of Business PNG. For more information, if you'd simply like to view this episode again, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Or to simply join the conversation, like our page on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter at the Twitter handle at Business PNG. Until next week, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Gerari, and this is Business PNG.